What's up, everybody? Ryan Turk here to answer some of your questions from the latest episode of Drift Garage, where I tackled my body kit, put the Super Doof kit on there, and also got the thing almost track ready so that me and Forsberg can go do a jam session. Okay, well, things are really starting to heat up with my build, as you can tell by that sweet burnout we had in the shop. Sorry, guys. But, um... Let's get to some of your questions, shall we? First question is from Marty Jack 97 In a Formula Drift round, does each car have a set amount of fuel for the weekend, or can you just fill up and go whenever you want? Well, yeah, we don't have any fuel restrictions. We can run any fuel brand, any quantity, and almost any octane. It's an ethanol-based fuel, so you burn about 30% more than regular gasoline. And we're probably going through about 20% anywhere from 25 to 45 gallons. In event, if we make it all the way to the finals and full Thursday practice, we're burning quite a bit of fuel. So um, it's a good thing that they don't have restriction because we're definitely consuming a lot. We get a lot of driving time throughout one of the drift weekends. Marcelo Apodaca asks, Chris, what size tires are you running on the 370Z? Well, we actually went with a double staggered setup. We have 19s in the front and 20s in the back, 9.5 inch wide in the front and 10.5 inch wide in the back. So we're running a 245 40 19 in the front and a 275 35 20 in the rear. We went with the Hankook Ventus V12s as it's a very good street tire, uh, more of a, you know, wet and dry performance tire versus the RS3 which is a you know ultra high performance very sticky very grippy tire that we do run on the street but also we will run in our Formula Drift competition cars. user CWK1998 asked, how many pounds of boost do you guys normally run? Uh, it depends on the car. The, the Pro Form of the D-Car running anywhere from 28 to 32 PSI of boost on a Turbo by Garrett uh, GTX 488R Turbo. And that's pretty much the limit of what you can run for, for that turbo. On the missile car in the 240 that I'm building now, I'm going to be running 15 pounds of boost, 15 to 20 pounds of boost. And um, that turbo, the 2871 GT Garrett Turbo, is capable of more, with some more power, but I'm just trying to keep it light because I don't want to add too much power to the drivetrain and, and put too much strain on uh, and all of that. It's just, uh, it doesn't need any more power than that for what I need to use it for, so there's no point in stressing the motor and, um, you know, having to run bigger fuel injectors. It's just nice. It's nice where it's at for that limit. On my KA Turbo setup, it's a full factory engine uh, from Nissan, and that one we're running about 16 pounds of boost on it, which is quite a bit for the stock KA, but we have a really good tune on it from MA Motorsports, and it keeps that thing running tip top. On the V6 370Z twin turbo car that we just built, we are running around uh, 14 PSI on that high horsepower pull, and we're probably gonna tone it down to about 12 PSI to keep it more safe for trackside use. Tristan Rizzo asks, hey Chris, did you do brakes or are they stock Z34 brakes you got? Are you confident about being stock? If it is, if you had changed them, what brakes would you be running? Well, yes, those brakes are from the factory. They do look enormous, but they are offered on the higher end Nissan 370Zs. 
They're four piston front, two piston rears, 14 something inch front rotors, and just incredible stopping power for the street and or track. It's not necessary to have that much braking power for drifting, which is why if I did change them, I would go to a lightweight Willwood setup like we run on our former drift competition cars. Because we mostly rely on the handbrake to slow our cars down, lock up the rear wheels. The actual foot pedal, we're not doing like full braking, like 160 down to 30 mile an hour, you know, back straight uh, braking zones like you would on a road race car. You know, we're using the angle of the car and pitching it and using the side grip to really slow these cars down. So having the foot brakes, is not as necessary as it would be on a road race type car. Oh, get pumped up! Oh, get pumped up! P-O-T, last name N-G-I-K. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> how much horsepower did Ryan's car register? Uh, the 240 made 302 on the MA Motorsports Dyno Dynamics Dyno with uh, Crazy Carl behind the uh, keyboard tuning the thing up. So um, we're, only, we're only running about 15 pounds of boost on the car, nothing crazy and uh, plenty of power to get the wheels spinning and, uh, and have some fun and not put too much stress on the drivetrain and the engine. YouTube user how to Bitcoin asked, "Hey Ryan, why do you put new panels on the missile car if you're going to be bashing it into people's doors?" Well, we kind of got the bumper car drift action out of our system when we first got the missile cars, or I did at least. So I think it was finally time to turn things around. I'd rather have a nicer car than I can uh, appreciate and have fun with and look at that doesn't make me disgusted, rather than. Uh, have something that's just always being smashed into and having to constantly work on and fix and smash body panels out to just be able to drive the car. So I think our system for having nicer cars, uh, making us still drive super aggressively, but trying not to, you know, uh, I guess target each other on the track and, and, and hit each other and just, just cause body damage. I mean, um, it's a lot of fun, but uh, also not having to work on a car 100% of the time is a lot more fun and just being able to hit the track and enjoy it and and uh, change tires and have that be the last thing that you have to do is, uh, is definitely the, the better way to have a track day and, and have it be more fun. Last question comes from Randy Turbowandet. Sorry if I butchered that one. Hey Chris, how did you do the standing burnout on the Z without pulling the rear taillight fuse? Well, for that car, we just kind of put that sucker in gear, loaded it up on the front brake, and dumped it off on the throttle. It stayed put, did a nice burnout. You don't have to pull the taillight fuse to get a car to do a standing burnout like that. You do have to turn on the VDC so that you can disconnect the traction control so that it will do such a thing. But um, I've never heard of anything about pulling a taillight fuse to make a car do a standing burnout. Uh, I could see how that would work on certain platforms, but for the 370Z, just hitting that VDC, you can go to town. All right, that is it for this week's response video. Thanks everybody for watching and asking the questions and uh, you know, always giving us positive feedback. It was really appreciated and uh, we are you know, doing our best to bring you guys good, good video content.
Stay tuned for next week's episode of Drift Garage. As always, only on Network A.